Hey guys, we are getting started with our cosmic tea. Um, I had a little uh, thing with um, getting on here, but we are going to find Olivia right now. There she is. Okay, perfect. Hi guys. Uh, live. My God. Perfect. All right. Oh my God, guys, another week with Cosmic Tea. Um, Liv, let me know. I hope she's coming on. There she is. And it's coming. <laughs> Bear with us a minute. Today we're going to be talking about how to handle disappointment. Hi, love. Oh my God, I love your red lip. <laughs> I'm like I straight out of the shower. The like minute. I dropped what? my phone at the last minute. It was awful and wonderful at the same time. How are you? I'm good. Wait, I'm going to have you speak or turn up your volume a little bit. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? You're so beautiful. I need everybody to hear you. Yes. <laughs> so I, so you were having difficulty getting on Instagram and then I was ready and I dropped my phone at the last minute. It was terrible. But oh um, no, I was sitting there and I'm like, why won't it like give me the option to go live? Like I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, oh my gosh. So guys, today, first off, such an amazing response to our cosmic tea from last week. For those of you that are new to us, we are on episode 13 of Cosmic Tea. The it has been incredible. Um, I'm going to agree with somebody who just said you look hot in your red because she does. She looks stunning. Um, as always, are we surprised? Um, I'm, I'm like a little, I'm like a little red fire candy that you don't realize how much pain I can inflict. <laughs> what? Like, meanwhile, you're no, you're like a little like early Cupid. Um, you're amazing. So um, oh. Cosmic Tea, we're on episode 13. It's been incredible. Definitely go check out the other ones if you like what we're doing. We're essentially two um, little <laughs> cosmic beings, um, intuitive medical medium under, under me, intuitive over here. Um, and we like to dish on all things that you need to support you in health, wealth, wellness, love, every area of your life and really... Um, we're like your girlfriend's guide to the universe, cosmically. Co um, cosmically so, and, right? and practically, yeah. Exactly. Um, so we always want to know what you are needing. Last week, we went heavy into anxiety um, and gave, and the, the response was just amazing. And today, we're going to be talking about how to handle disappointment. Mm. I'm really excited to talk about this because, you know, this is a question that we get a lot. It's because... You know, I think it's easy for people to say, you guys are so positive, you know, you run successful businesses, you help people with this every day, but life goes on for us as well. And, you know, there are consistent and constant disappointments. You can't prevent that um, in life, but you can control how you respond to it. And that's what we're going to teach you today. We can teach you how to roll with the punches um, because guess what? Life is just going to keep right on happening. And um and you've got to learn to develop this spiritual energetic armor. So we're going to dive into that. Um, I love that you called it spiritual and energetic armor because guys, especially on social media, I remember when I was getting into energy work and I would, you know, I'm coaching and supporting people and, and there would be like what would be deemed an energy vampire. And I remember feeling literally hung over like actually just feeling like I'm like I don't even feel like myself I don't know what just happened it was especially too when I was just starting doing like live workshops and retreats where we were doing a lot of like inner child and trauma work and you know there's a lot of of things and and people that had never done any work and I hadn't learned yet about protecting myself and you can feel drains you can feel the other energy on you and you can just sit there and you can even it will alter your mood it can alter you in a lot of ways and you will actually think like am i sick 
why am I angry all of a sudden? Or why do I feel so tired? Or what is that? And really understanding energy and having that armor like Liv is talking about is so important. And especially even just roaming social media. Mm -hmm. Like there is so much we don't realize that the minute we turn these beautiful phones on and our computers and we're scrolling, all of that is coming into our field essentially. Absolutely. And you know, if there's one way to get your feelings hurt or to feel shitty about yourself immediately, it's to tune into social media. We hope to provide sort of a buffer zone to that. We want it to be an uplifting experience. We want you to feel good when you come here. And hopefully that's what we're facilitating. That being said, all you have to do is start scrolling and to feel like shit about your body because you don't have a six pack, um, about your house because it's not the mansion that's there, um, or about people's opinions right so we have to keep those to a minimum one of the best ways that i can give you as a piece of advice to limit your fear of disappointment but also your response to disappointment is to limit how much strength and um, gravity you put on the opinions of other people so step one is to understand that you are a being here on this earth in this meat skeleton riding a rock through space no one else can speak to what you have been through or actually what you will go through. It's fine to converse and to hear different perspectives and points of view, but don't ever let anyone else and their opinion be the focal point upon which you base your entire life and certainly not your sense of self-worth. So that's one. You have to get really strong and really solid in who you are. Stop refusing to have that conversation about who you are. Don't look at what everybody else is. Don't look at what everybody else is driving. What turns you on? What lights you up? What hurts you? What empowers you? Have those conversations with yourself and have that really intimate conversation. Because the number one piece of armor that we can give to you for your spiritual armor is to have that strong sense of self, to know so unshakably who you are that people can't really tell you anything differently about yourself. So it's very important that you know and have a strong sense of self. You know, for myself, and Melissa, you as well. People are like, oh, you're in the public eye. You do this, you do that. Let me tell you something, okay? I have people that every day are like too skinny, too fat, eat a donut, uh, whatever. And if I let what everybody else says and everybody else's opinion about my work, what I'm doing, what I'm wearing, how I look affect me, I would be curled up in a fetal position in the corner. You have to turn that don't give a fuck switch on. You've got to turn it on. And there's yeah. never been a better day to do that than today. It's so true. I love how fired up you are right it's now. It's the red. It's like, no, it's it's like, the, it's it like is a, the red. I'm like, I'm like zen down. I'm like, 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 I'm going to go into some breath work. Um, no, I love it. And it's so true. And as Jerry and Esther Hicks say of law of attraction, if you don't know them, awesome, Abraham. Um, and I remember this stood out to me. It was no one has the power to hurt you unless you give them that power. Yes. Absolutely no one. So really understand that the only opinion that matters is your own and everyone is a walking projection of things that have <laughs> been projected onto them and they're walking around judging. Most of all, we're always in fear of like, oh, they're judging me, they're judging me. Most of the time, each person is harshly judging themselves, not even fully aware of everybody else. And those that are judging are people of a lower vibration that you don't want in your space anyway, because it's the people that need to judge that are in an insecure space with themselves and need to attack, not from a place of a high vibration or a place of love, but from a fear-based mentality and from a lack-based mentality, which is what you don't want anyway. Mm. So no one has the power to hurt you unless you give them that power. That's your family, that's your friends, that's your partner, those are your colleagues, that's people on social media and trolls and anybody else that wants to say things to you. So you have to powerfully own who you are, own your voice, and know that honestly, especially on platforms and social media, everyone's sharing based off of their view, their life, what they've learned, what they wanna share, and it's their point of view. And it's up to you whether or not you want to take that on. And I always tell people, take what speaks to you, leave what doesn't. 
You know, you don't have to, like, there is not one diet that's right for everybody. Somebody, you know, had like an Atkins diet. It worked for him. He decided to share it. It worked for some people. Not, didn't work for everybody. It ended up not working for him because he died. But the point <laughs> is, right, like, everyone's just sharing and hoping that they're helping somebody. But you have to be connected to your body. You have to be connected to your worth. You have to be connected to your truth. What is it that you want? And really being grounded in what you want is what will be. And Absolutely. really honoring your word with that. Absolutely. And if there's one thing that being a part of Melissa's world, if you are, you know, someone who, and let me tell you something, you can be the most successful, powerful person in the world. And we all have insecurities, but being a part of Melissa's Everyone. life and the gift that is her and working with her, I can tell you that my sense of self has just like, bloomed because that's what she gives to me right that's that's the gift of knowing her so i oh. and you, you know really though and you know i don't bullshit you know i do not bullshit does not bullshit so, so that is the benefit not of being an air sign it's like we will just tell you you know and it might hurt your feelings but we'll just tell you um so, so that's what off. she really does so if any of you are listening to this and you're like i wish I could feel that way. Please contact Melissa because she's so good at that. She's so good at just like identifying the bits of worth, and, you know, that, that even she sees in you and, and really pointing those out so that you can take those on and really start onboarding themselves. There's a reason that, you know, her programs are called the whole woman, but whole men, whatever. Um, we're not gender discretionary here. So, you know, um, thank you for this like loving shout out. Well, we have a love affair. We, we are like do. obsessed with each other. I'm pretty sure she's the one. <laughs> so sure. So it's it's fine. We'll figure that out. Um, at some we'll point, figure that ours. out. <laughs> yes. Maybe so handling complicated. disappointment. I want to ask you. Um, you have in your life, and and I I'm gonna do a full love fest back to Liz. Um, but I really want you to share because, and I think we both can give. We both had our fair share of disappointment, of overcoming, um, you know, of overcoming a lot of obstacles, um, and really um, looking at, still choosing to look at life as the glass is half full, and how is everything always working out for me? So, when it comes to disappointment, whether it's something that you really wanted matters of the heart, um, which I do believe they all have different levels within yeah. them. What are, you know, three of your top tips that really support you in taking care of you and in um, not being reactive and staying grounded in your truth? So taking care of you, not being reactive, because a lot of people with when disappointment happens, immediately they respond, like when they get let down or there's an expectation hangover as my friend Christine mm. Hassler would say you know right away they get into a reactive space um so what are some of those that you do you know I think that's such a great question because I was just thinking as you were saying not being reactive is that a younger version of myself would have been much more reactive and Me why that was I can tell you right now is because I hadn't done the work to resolve myself to the point where I was um, sort of bulletproof in, <clears throat> in, in myself and in my self worth, you know, so I think we grow up with this ideal of allowing other people to tell us about ourselves and to tell us you're sensitive, you're not sensitive, you're smart, you're not, you're athletic, you're not. Um, and so I think we're all sort of pre groomed in that way. And it really was just a matter of becoming so stubborn in my own self worth that I was like, No, actually, I am worth it. And like piss off if you don't think so because, <laughs> yeah. because honestly the world will not come to save you okay the world is not here to gas you up it can be when you get to that point that you feel so strong and so solid in yourself but until then guess what as melissa said everything and everyone is just you pushed out into the world around you so it's all a reflection of you everyone so, is a mirror absolutely so everyone if you practice a vibration or um, a belief of instability, guess what's going to show up in your life? Instable, unstable, <laughs> unstable. Got you. We got unstable you. Unstable and unstable. Okay, none of the stables are showing up in your life. Not, not one of those. Stables. Not horses. <laughs> not situations. I can know. It's there are the no I'm, so I'm so sorry. It's it's the red and it's the cat. You should apologize. I feel like I need to send you a martini. 
Come Guys, over. Just, and FYI, if you want to come hang out with us, we're going to go to Tulum. Don't and you want to? We might end up just running an impromptu retreat. So <laughs> down. We, be great. Even if even if people don't ask for our opinion, we might actually just start giving <laughs> unsolicited <laughs> advice on the beach. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> we're totally, we will totally just be like cosmic tea, cosmic tea. Yes. Yes. Cocktails. Cosmic tea, tea, like tea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so so really it's about like you know, becoming so solid. And you have to want that. You have to really yeah. want that. And that's really a strong step for me was that I had to believe that I was deserving of that. And we've been through this before on Cosmic Two, where we talk about the fact that, look, you're here, you're you you have breath, you have life, you deserve it just as much as the next person. But it's not going to come to you while you feel like shit. It's not going to come to you while you feel unworthy. That's the rub okay so if you're listening to this i need you to find a loophole whatever it is for you that helps you to feel that sense of self-worth i wouldn't recommend having other people write lists of gassing you up um but sometimes that can work just to get a perspective however i would list so when you say writing a list you mean so an exercise that i do um, with clients is when they're really getting grounded in who they are, they're kind of like, I don't even know who I am. I don't know what I'm good at. And their mindset is more prone to the negative side. Yeah. Really asking five or 10 close people to them to, yeah. to write out what they love about them, what they think they're good at um, and what their natural like talents um, and almost like letters of appreciation or even lists of appreciation have given my clients immense insight that they were like, oh my God, I never even realized that people saw me that way. So that's also something, um, is that what you were referencing? Yeah, absolutely. So I don't know if you remember those wheels in school that they would, or they did it in my class anyway, because my teacher was like the bomb. I wasn't liked in school. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You weren't liked in school? <laughs> no, no, I was, but, um, the... Like, literally, when my parents would go in, um, they would be like, you know, to talk with like the teachers, they would say, your daughter has no problems making friends. She's a little social butterfly. And then they would kind of be like, but she could improve in her reading skills oh, and like, oh. you know, school. Yeah, school. But I, it is a gift. It is a gift. No, it is a gift to make be a friends. social butterfly and, and to make friends and to connect with people in that way. Um, I do feel as though there's something about just gassing yourself up in that way where you're just like, you know, I am this, whether it's I am a good friend or I am a good, I promise you there's something that you are good at and that's what mm -hmm. you have to find. You know, you have to find the thing that you are good at. Um, you have to, and, and if it's, if it seems insignificant to you, I promise you like that, that is the, that's a sort of breadcrumb onto the bigger trail of things. And you can ask, as Melissa said, your close friends that you know are going to give you honest, um, objective answers. What are you good at? What is your, you know, what things make up the sum total of you if you really feel that you don't know? But most of us, if you really walk yourself through it, can find that. So I do lists um, to, to sort of ground myself and to deal with disappointment. Another thing that I do is I tell myself, um, everything is always working out for me. That's another Abraham Hicks. Oh my trick. gosh, I say that too. Because even if you're in always. the midst of something that seems really terrible, you have to believe that, you know, everything is always working out for you because it is. And like that guys apply that if you're going to yeah. when COVID lifts, like I do that all the time when I'm going to the airport, if I'm late, I'm like, everything's always working out for me. Yeah. It works or I expect only miracles. I expect amazing news today. I expect to have a, like an amazing day. Really being like, I expect. And every day and every way, things just keep getting better and better and better and better. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Because your expectation will determine what shows up. Now, will it plan it out to the 1,000th degree? No, maybe not. But here's, here's the catch. It will prepare you to bounce back. You'll take the hit and you'll bounce back when disappointment does occur. Um, and so if you have the fundamental belief that everything is always working out for you and that one door closes, one door opens, nothing leaves your life unless something better for you is coming, you will see miraculous things show up in your life. So it takes any disappointment and it transmutes it into an experience that is just bringing 
forward something better or something more or something, you know, that you really want to have occur. So um, those are my so sort of like rules. What about you? Well, I, I, in, in playing off of that, because you and I definitely, guys, when you're resetting your mindset, when you're rewiring the way that you think, actually speaking into existence and understanding that you are a co-creator always of your experience, that life isn't happening to you, it's happening for you, and that you can, I always say there's power in your pen. So I write out and will script out exactly what I want to, to experience. I will even bullet out that day. I had a great cosmic tea with, you know, Liv. We did this. My workout was amazing. I connected with the, the perfect people that were needed to execute this. This came in today. That came in today. I will write things out. I'm so happy and grateful that, right? So really being in that space of being intentional. Write out your intention for each day. If you're about to have a conversation with your partner, with a colleague, write out how it goes. See it happening that way bring it to life for you and be a co-creator. When you had mentioned about um, things not working out, I would say rejection, right? It's just redirection to something greater. We've heard that. If you haven't heard it, it's a great saying, so say it. Um, rejection is redirection to something greater. If you start to recognize that everything in life is happening to you, even things where you're like, why in God's name would that be a good thing? Still just go, wait a minute, what if that is? Like I've had things happen to me where I go, great. I am being groomed. I am being, I am being guided and strengthened different faculties within myself that I otherwise would not know to do mm. had this thing not happened to me, had this, whatever it is, had that breakup, had this illness, had this, like, had this loss, whatever that is going, okay, so what is actually here for me? What can I, what can I gain from this experience? Why is this supportive to the whole of what I'm doing and what it is that I want? And then it's also a big one for me is having faith. And faith is I trust in myself. I trust that a desire of my heart is meant for me. I don't need to know the how. I just need to keep being in the alignment. And the alignment is I'm intentional. I script out what I want. And then I speak into existence the things that I want. So I'm not complaining. I'm not just like, if I'm in a state of complaining that I'm out of alignment, right? Yeah. And I'm actually disconnected from my highest self. I'm disconnected from divine consciousness. So I always know that if I'm focused in a negative, if I'm in a fear-based mentality, well, there's only two human emotions, love and fear. So then I'm operating from disconnection. And when you operate from disconnection, you know it because life is a struggle. You're striving, you're working really hard instead of things flowing and working for you. And you feel exhausted, overwhelmed, stressed out, all of those emotions that really lead you into a negative spiral. So when disappointment does happen for me, like I had a friend um, that we were in yoga the other day, we came out and he's like, I, and he started his own business and he was just saying, he's like, I'm just really frustrated. I trained somebody and I don't understand. They didn't even give me any week's notice and they were a pivotal person for me and now my workloads completely doubled and blah 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 and I just said I found in my business and building my business whether it's in romantic relationships or you know uh, people that are working for me when they go or it's kind of abrupt or like or if they're just like this isn't working anymore or I'm like this isn't working anymore um, it's because I'm going somewhere where somebody else is needed. Yeah. And so if I, it doesn't mean that I don't go, oh, what can I learn from that? Or could I have been a better, you know, boss? Or could I have been a better partner? It's not that I bypass that, but I do look and go, okay, if there were things that are completely out of my control um, or something I was guided to, then I have to trust that there's a reason for it. And I gave him that guidance that just said, if this person left, then know that where you're going, they weren't tied to that vision and they weren't going to be a part of the growth and the beautiful thing that you are building. So trust somebody else will come in. And he was just like, that gave me so much peace in understanding that there is a greater force at play, right? And I think that that's what faith is all about. It's like, oh, the weight of the world isn't on my shoulders. So when things happen, I get to trust in the reasoning behind it.
Absolutely. And that's really the core of disappointment is disappointment means that <clears throat> essentially spiritually what it means is that you are looking at something and your higher self or the source or whatever your belief system is, is looking at the same thing and it doesn't agree with your perspective or your conclusion or the way that you feel about it because that higher perspective is looking at it and going, this isn't the end. This is going to work out. I know what comes down the road. So in any disappointment, what you can do, if, especially if you feel real shitty about it, know that there's an internal perspective that doesn't agree with the way that you are looking at things because the higher self perspective and the, the, you know, spiritual, I guess, to simplify it, perspective of yourself is looking at it and going, this isn't over. You know, there's yeah. something that's greater that's at play. So that emotional indicator is also a way that you can tell how you are lined up or not lined up with something. So when you, when you approach situations that way, I think it really does help to mitigate disappointment because you just start using that up. Oh, I feel really bad about this, which means it's probably not exactly the way that I'm viewing it or the way that I'm judging it. So that's helpful. Um, you know, and, and I share that Matthew Hussey video, um, who's, Matthew, we love you. I mean, we I love just, you, Matthew. I, we I we just, exchange your videos. Yeah. Often. Like I, we, we send your vids back and forth and Matthew Hussey, just, I love you. Um, thank we you. We love the work you do in the world. <laughs> and you, and your cute self. He loves um, you. So, so in the Matthew Hussey video, he really talks about really the essentials of it, which is you can't control and you shouldn't try to control um, what other people may or may not do that bring to disappointment, whether that's in business or relationship or whatever, what you can control is self. And when you step out of that and you try to control all of these different aspects of things, you feel exhausted and, and essentially it's like water slipping through your, your hands. It can't be done. So you have to control your own inner fortitude and use that same energy you would use about worrying to build yourself up and to make yourself that that best possible version that if things do go wrong if things do go sideways you'll be able to withstand it you'll be okay right yeah. and chances are you're probably a lot closer to that version of yourself than you may think that you are because human beings are really really resilient creatures and i know that life has been really difficult the past couple of years and yeah it can normally kick the shit out of people anyway but the past couple of years have have been whack so yeah but you are resilient you are a resilient human being and again we're still here still in this body still in this earth there's another day so that's another mantra is i will just say you know tomorrow's a new day you are more resilient than you think that you are i can promise you that i don't even need to know you to know that so um I love those you. are my tips yeah I love you. And I'm um, just in closing the one last thing I'll say, and then I actually have to run to a zoom meeting, um, is, uh, is, you know, when Liv said today's a new day, every day, really, really be present to understand the only thing you can control is this present moment. So really not bringing the past into the present and not allowing the past to dictate your future is another great way. So when a disappointment happens, the quicker you can clean up the vibration, the better, um, and to turn it into how is this working for me? Um, it will be really, really supportive. So thank you guys so much for being here for today's Cosmic Tea, How to Handle Disappointment. Um, I feel like you guys got incredible tips. We absolutely love you. We love that this oh, audience just keeps growing. It's from all over the world. It's, it's, it's crazy good. It's crazy incredible. Good. It's incredible. Please DM Liv and myself. Any questions you have, if you want to connect, um, Liv is an incredible doctor um, with an amazing book that's coming out. When is that coming? Um, in I, I think it's fall 2021 to spring 2022. Oh my gosh. So we will we will definitely be talking about that. We're going to do a whole cosmic tea just around that where I get to interview <laughs> my gorgeous co-host. Um, and stay tuned because we have a lot of surprises of our love surprises. Sleepless shirts, sleeplessness <laughs> up our coming for you as I basically look like much. naked. Uh, my hair's wet and in a bun. I have so much hair. Um, okay. I've got to run because I have to get to a meeting. I love you all so much, Liv. You are incredible. Um, obviously, I'm going to be messaging you in about yeah, a minute. We'll talk later. Um, and I love you guys. And let us know what is going on for you. 
Thank you for being here. Join us each week for Cosmic Tea on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, all other time zones. Please join. We love you so much and are so very, very grateful for each and every one of you for showing up each week. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye, my gorgeous co-host.